Welcome to Friday night's video in our master series. This is the 93rd video in our master series, and I do believe the seventh video in our subgroup mixing. Tonight, what I wanted to address the most simple way of trying to get those out front vocals mixed, and that is may sound ridiculous, but you either have a mono file which can work fine if you do some really good processing on it sometimes a mono file in certain sections or throughout an entire song can sound fine also a stereo file you know and on top of it with the stereo file you can actually do some of the things that we've talked about by splitting the channel you know with this channel splitters plugins that'll split the channels and things like that but besides that, there's another thing you can do that really doesn't have anything to do with a whole lot of the processing techniques we've talked about so far when dealing with the out front instruments. And that's basically just panning. So, and you've got either, you know, you've either got two takes of the same performance, let's say, of the lead guitar or the lead vocal or whatever it is. And they've been captured with two different microphones. So just check for phase issues. And you've got those. Or you've doubled the track. And you've went to the second track. And you've done some work on it to make it sound like it was captured from a different really nice microphone. And then you just have panics. You know, this concept is really simple. And it's not that difficult. Because it there's really no processing to do. The, your biggest thing is, you know, you more than likely are going to go out more than 50%. So normally, a normal configuration of that is normally going out to like 75% right and left or more than that. You can come in farther than that than you want, but you'll find that most of the time, if you go 75 right and left, it's going to give it a little bit more stereo width on the, you know, as far as the field is concerned that you're listening to. And if you go out farther... You just got to be careful. Really steer clear of going farther than 95% right and left. All the way right and left are really reserved for special kind of situations that are really filling in the, 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 the wall of sound kind of thing that you really need. You know, you've really figured out your pannings like we talked about in mixing concepts. And you need, you know, something all the way right and left to either... To either have its own space or you're doing some of the mixing concepts we talked about in some of these other videos in this subgroup mixing like panning all the way right and left so you can get as much delay on one side from the other to give it this huge stereo sound you know with the delays and detunings and all that and so really stay inside of that you know normally 75 percent right and left you know, and then, you know, you go 75% right and left, you know, 85% right and left, 95% right and left. Those are some good multiples to stay inside of. Because it really, once you've taken one of the, one of the captures, the same capture is captured with a different microphone, or you've done some work on it to make it sound different to where it's done. You've EQ'd it a little bit different. You've, you know, sculpted it a little bit different. You might even put a little bit of an effect on it that's a little bit different. You might have done the bodybuilding that we talked about in first phase processing a little bit different. And as you blend those together to where they sound basically like the same thing, that it's basically you get this chance to process this vocal to make it sound as good as you can possibly think and then process it as good as you possibly can think make it you know as good as you think it can be a little bit differently like you've got two really great microphones like this fifty thousand dollar microphone this fifty thousand dollar mobile microphone you love both of them you know for different reasons and you have a chance to utilize them both to so that you can incorporate both of the effects of them into either side and neither side will actually be overriding on top of the other they'll basically both have their own space Space, but it won't be perceived that way because the mind will basically perceive that there's a bigger stereo field but there's not no delay going on you can still use some detunings on one side or the other but basically you've got these this side over here to, you know really easy examples this side's a little brassier it's you know it's like that microphone had a little bit more upper end you know and a little more air in it and the other microphone is a little bit darker and warmer you know and it, you like them both they're both great microphones it's that kind of a concept and that but you've got both of them on the right and left when you sit back you're going to hear aspects of both of those really great microphones and they're not going to be convoluting each other they'll be at least 75 percent right and left 
and you know a, you know between a half a db and 2 db normally above the rest of the mix that they'll stand out and it's almost they'll blend to some point but they'll also almost preserve their own identity also to some point so that trying to relate that to some point because we've talked about blending or preserving identity and mixing concepts that it's a little bit of both but you can come out with some really great stuff i mean take like a guitar lead that you've done this to and you've got it panned 85 percent right and left and you've done some really cool work the first one you've processed it and it's just beautiful guitar lead it's in a mono track and it's just beautiful you've doubled it or you've captured it with a different microphone that has a little bit different flavor and you might have added some other type of a really light effect to it, a little light phaser or it's flanger or chorusy kind of thing that's just light in there. Or, you know, you've EQ'd it a little bit differently and, you know, you've done a little bit different bodybuilding on it. And those two combined and up above the rest of the mix is is just trying not to get it convoluted. You got to be real careful about, you know, you know, obviously anything that's sitting on top, you don't really want to destroy with reverb and mudding the heck out of it with your bass end or your high end too much to cause it to start, you know, losing its integrity. And it's a really simple, it sounds very simple, but using some of the techniques we've talked about without the delay effects and just using the pannings and, you know, using the detuning possibly on the other side and sometimes not. Sometimes you don't, you know, don't detune the other side so that it basically sounds like the same instrument because the detuning concept, basically it's like the same performance from the same instrument, but a different instrument. Does that make sense? So like two cellos, there's something like that that are from two different cellos where this is the basically the same performance from the same performer that you don't want to put delay on one side but you want to make it a little bit different so that has both the sides have these cool characteristics different unique characteristics that are riding up on top of the mix you know that are very clear and out front and in your face and it has a really nice effect and clarity you know this effect you know this normally adds the most clarity other than doing nothing to a doubled track and panning them right and left 75 75 or something like that that's going to obviously be a bit more clear because there's going to be no difference between them or a mono track or you know something like that so you know it's a really simple concept but you know it's very useful and it's very useful in some situations and it can be very useful in a lot of situations because you might find the concepts we've talked about so far you might mix them up a little bit for different situations to get different effects to make it sound different to make a verse sound different for a song or you know it, you might it might be your go-to for an album you know your album you're going to do all the vocals this way for this album so the whole album vocals sound with this type of processing on you know on the out front vocals you know for that album you know and it's part of its you know characteristic trademark of that album you did this processing you did on all the vocals and that can be the same way with any of them but it's a great technique and to use some of the things we talked about that's going to make it a little bit different so that they kind of preserve their own identity but they blend a little bit you know if you change one side and you know to to uh cause this blended identity preservation kind of thing happening that can really have a really cool effect and if you you know use it for a whole album or just a song or something like that that you know it's very useful so that's another technique to really look at and experiment with the biggest thing you run into with this is the second track being different but good so you know you run into this problem that you're going to prefer this microphone but you want to make the second track sound like this other really great microphone that might not have been your preference or that you were like well i know on this one i didn't really want to do this stuff to do it like i want to put a little bit of phaser effect on it or something or flanger or a little bit of chorus effect or some other type of effect that i have or a little different bodybuilding and do it on the other track and then blend them to, you know, have them right, you know, 75, 85 or 95 right and left, you know, and it, it's going to be, it's going to cause a difference. It's going to cause more complexity to the sound. And as long as you don't muddy it up with reverb too much or things like that to convolute it and cause it to start blending into the rest of the mix and, you know, aspects of its, you know, complexities to get lost from being convoluted by things like reverb and, and those types of processing, then it's a really great effect. 
So practice with that one also, and it is a very useful effect other than just static, doubling the track and panning it right and left, 75, 85, 95, and things like that, and just a mono file. So peace, help, love. I hope you enjoyed this video and our subgroup mixing, and I'll see you in the next video when we talk about just plain mixing it and kind of go over some of the concepts we talked a little bit that we didn't really actually mix any audio or anything like that and we'll just kind of mix a few pieces of audio and talk about it a little bit in the next video before we go, go into things like you know you know support tracks or support groups and backing groups so peace self love i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one